Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 891. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about how the Fed's easy money is driving net worth gains because it's no secret the Federal Reserve has stimulated the economy with trillions of dollars. And this is finding its way into the stock market, into the housing market, and into people's net worth. So first, I want to share with you some words from a billionaire, Stanley Druckenmiller, who says, The Fed's easy money is lulling investors into a false sense of security. I thought this was an interesting article because he's talking about how the Fed is propping up all of these assets. It says billionaire hedge fund pioneer Stanley Druckenmiller believes the Federal Reserve's continued easy money measures have distorted asset prices and lulled investors into a false sense of security. The market is not speaking right now, Druckenmiller told CNBC's Joe Kernan in an email Thursday, shortly after stock futures shot up despite stronger than expected numbers on May consumer prices. The S&P 500 reached an all-time high shortly after the opening bell. Market participants will continue to ignore risks until the Fed stops canceling market signals, the Duquesne family office CEO added. The Fed's repeatedly said any spike in inflation will be transitory as the economy recovers from the depths of the pandemic, suggesting monetary accommodation put in place during the early days of COVID will remain for the foreseeable future. With the Fed at bay, Druckenmiller believes investors will continue to disregard looming signs of inflation and other market risks. Druckenmiller has been critical of the central bank's approach recently, telling CNBC last month he believes the long-term health of the U.S. dollar was at stake. While indicating support for the Fed's emergency actions in 2020 as the pandemic took hold, he said adjustments are now needed due to the strength of the recovery. I can't find any period in history where monetary and fiscal policy were this out of step with the economic circumstances. Not one, Druckenmiller said May 11th on Squawk Box. In the same interview, he said there was currently a raging mania in all assets. So that is from Stanley Druckenmiller, a highly respected hedge fund manager. And he's right. There's a lot of stimulus money that has found its way into assets, into commodities, and prices are skyrocketing higher for many, many things. And it showed up in the inflation numbers last month. The Fed says this is transitory. It's going to change. It's not going to be sustainable. But many other people think it is the new way and that this higher inflation is here to stay. So I want to share with you this second article on CNBC.com. It says household net worth climbs to $136.9 trillion thanks to big stock market gains. It was written by Jeff Cox. And it says the net worth of U.S. households climbed to new heights as 2021 began and the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic began to fade. Thanks largely to a surge in the stock market, the total balance sheet for households and nonprofits rose to $136.9 trillion in the first quarter, a 3.8% gain from the end of 2020, according to Federal Reserve data released Thursday. Of that total, $3.2 trillion came from equity holdings, while $1 trillion was due to the continued escalation in real estate values. The S&P 500 gained 7% for the quarter, as investors anticipated rising corporate earnings and accommodative fiscal and monetary policy, while also playing speculative bets on so-called meme stocks. From a historical perspective, household net worth has nearly doubled from its level of a decade ago as the nation was still escaping the throes of the Great Recession. The increase left net worth as a share of disposable income 
at just under 700% off the all-time high at the end of 2020, but still elevated in historical terms. Household debt totaled $16.9 trillion for the quarter, growing at a 6.5% rate that was the fastest pace going back to 2006. The gain in household value came as the growth rate in total private and government debt slowed to 5.8% from 6.3% in the fourth quarter of 2020 and was much lower than in the first quarter of last year. That was when government spending pumped trillions of dollars into the economy and triggered debt growth at a 10.8% level, followed by a 25.6% increase in the second quarter. Federal government debt increased 6.5% in the first quarter, well below the 10.9% rate in the last three months of 2020, but still enough to push the total debt level to just below $28 trillion at the end of the quarter. State and local government debt rose at a 3.8% rate compared with 1.6% in the previous quarter. After slowing considerably in the second half of 2020, business debt picked up again, rising at a 4.4% pace. End of article. So there you have it. Prices are going up. Inflation's going up. It's fueled by debt and stimulus. And this is what we would have expected. That's what debt and stimulus does. It ends up having too much money chasing too few goods, which is what inflation numbers are all about. But I do still think that this debt level that is out there is unsustainable. This worldwide debt situation is a huge problem. But the very worst levels of debt come from governments themselves. The U.S. government has over $100 trillion in unfunded liabilities like Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, etc., which it has promised but has no money to pay for generations of taxing people is not going to pay back this debt. And I see in the future, it's going to have to be some sort of coordinated debt jubilee to forgive all of the debt that has been created. I still think that's somewhere in our future. But until then, household net worths are climbing, real estate's climbing, prices for food and energy are climbing, Everything's going to be getting more expensive as a lot of those dollars are chasing fewer goods. I think that's why a lot of people have jumped out of the US dollar into cryptocurrencies, into precious metals and other things that gain value rather than things that lose value. That's because inflation itself is reducing the purchasing power of the US dollar. Scholars who are studying the way that energy, food, and housing costs are getting more expensive, have put the actual numbers at somewhere closer to 12 to 13% in the last year, rather than the 5% number that the government is reporting. That to me seems like a more accurate number, a 12 or 13% rise, as we've seen energy at the gas pump, we've seen housing costs, we've seen rental, costs, we've seen food costs all skyrocket in the last year, much beyond a 5% rate. This portends that people are going to want to invest in more physical assets, things that are tangible assets, and staying away from things that are paper assets, such as savings accounts, CDs, bonds, and the like. So continue to think about adding things like precious metals, and cryptocurrencies to 5% of your portfolio as an inflation hedge. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available so you never miss one of them. And my entire library of wealth mentoring podcasts are available to you at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. Remember that Apple Podcasts only has a couple hundred of my podcasts but we're almost to number 900 here pretty soon. And all of those are stored for you on my website so that whatever topic you wanna know more about, it's there for you at no cost. Just go to lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. 
Check out our website, blog and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.